Hello all, welcome to the session on Java AWT, Graphics and Color. Today we will be discussing about the fundamentals of AWT. AWT stands for Abstract Window Toolkit. This is a package in Java which helps you to create graphical user interfaces or what you say icons rather than having the command prompt or CUI. Okay, so let's uh, move on to the details of AWT. So as I said before, AWT stands for Abstract Window Toolkit and it is nothing but an API. So now what is an API? API stands for Application Programmable Interface. So we have learned about interfaces, right? So what is an interface? Interface is similar to a class but the difference is that it has methods which are not completely defined or what you say they have abstract methods. Okay, so here also it is an interface which means it is having some abstract methods which are related to creating GUI or window based applications in Java. Okay, so there are some features of AWT. So first thing is that unlike the platform independent nature of Java, AWT is uh, found to be platform dependent. Okay, that is according to the hardware of the underlying system, you will have variations in the display. Okay, the second thing is that it is a heavyweight package, which means they are supposed to use the resources of the operating system. Okay, so all the components of an AWT are supposed to use the components of operating system or resources of the operating system. That is why it is said to be platform dependent and heavy weighted. So the Java AWT package has classes which help you to create text fields, labels, text areas, radio buttons, checkboxes, etc. Usually all these are part of what we say the visual display or the uh, graphical user interface right so now let's see what is the java awt hierarchy so this is the hierarchical class diagram that connects to awt so as you can see there is a super class called object which is being inherited by another class called component which is in turn becomes the parent for all these classes okay so the button class, the label class, you can see all of them are classes. So if you want to create a button, you will have to use the button class. If you want to create a label, then you can use the label class. Similarly, all of these are classes which are inherited from the component class. Okay. So there is a super class called object. It is, it is inherited by the component class. Again, they are again inherited by all these subclasses okay so there is something called containers so what we are going to see next is the types of containers that are available in the awt package so as the name says container it is the entity that is going to contain something so here the container entity is going to contain all the buttons or labels or checkboxes or text field, text area, whatever you want to be added into the GUI, you will have to use them as part of a container. Okay, so there are various containers in your uh, AWT. So window is a container, frame is a container, dialogue is a container, applet is again a container, panel is a container. So all these are containers which are used to contain other graphical elements. Okay, so let's move on to the fundamentals of AWT in detail. So container, as I said before, it is used to contain other components. Okay, so these classes are supposed to extend from the container class and those containers include frame, dialogues and panels. Okay. So again, window. Window is another type of container, but it has a small difference from the other containers that it doesn't have any border 
or any menu bars unlike we see windows in our uh, powerpoint presentations or whatever we used to in gui here a window will not have any menu bar or any particular borders okay so if you want to create a window then you will have to use a, either a frame a dialog or another window panel is again a container that will not contain a title bar or a menu bar okay it can contain elements like buttons text fields etc frame this is the most commonly used container of all the time in awt and this one is supposed to contain title bar it can have menu bars and it can contain any other components like buttons or text field or whatever so these are some methods which is available in the component class and these are being inherited by the comp, uh, container or the subclass subclasses also okay so there is a component add method so as the name says it is used to add a component and it is going to accept an argument of a type component then you can set the size of a component you can set the layout of your container then you can set whether a particular container can be made visible or not so all these are the most commonly used methods while you are dealing with awt okay so let's see a quick example so before we go on to the example as i said before we are using frames generally uh, for awt okay so when you are going to use the frame definitely you will have to put a hand on the frame class right so how can you associate a frame into your class you can use one, uh, two methods one is the globally recognized inheritance method that is you can extend the frame class or you can have even another method which is that you can associate with the frame class object okay so i will show you examples uh, of both okay so first let's start with example which is using inheritance to uh, utilize the frame okay so as i said the, uh, as i said before this is a program uh, which i have connected from the internet okay so here you have a class which is called first okay and this is extending the frame class this is extending the frame class which means all the methods that are available in the main class except those we are we have declared as private will be inherited automatically into your class okay then what happens you are creating an object of the button class which means you are going to add a button okay then the next thing is that you have to specify where in the window your particular button should appear and in what size okay so this is a particular method which helps you to uh, decide on all these okay so the first two arguments states the x and y coordinates of your buttons top left corner okay your buttons top left corner x y coordinate is mentioned in the first two arguments so what are the next two arguments first one or the third one here it is the length or what is length of your button and the next one is the width of your button okay so in general what what happens here is that at the index position at the pixel position indexed by 30 100 you are going to start your button okay and it will have a length of 80 and a width of 30 pixels each okay then this particular method was explained earlier so this is going to add the button into this frame okay then you are he here you are setting the size of your frame you are setting the layout manager if you have a particular layout manager that means if you are going to design a website and you already have a template with you then you can uh, add that template here if you don't have anything in particular then you can set it as null okay then set visibility you have to set this particular container as visible so that others can view uh, it in the output so that is mentioned here okay and in the main method you are creating an object of your class okay let's see how the output will be 
so this is the output so as i said before this is 30 100 this particular point this is 80 centim 80 pixels i'm sorry and this is 30 pixels so this is your button and you have a text on it which says click me okay that was mentioned here so i hope that is clear for you next we will see how to associate a frame using association so here see you have a class which is not extending it from the frame class okay so you don't have any inheritance property here but what you are going to do inside the constructor you are associating the frame class object okay so you have a class you have its own constructor and inside the constructor you are associating an object of the frame class and then what happens you are creating a button again you are creating a button with the text click me and with some predefined boundaries and the starting pixels then starting coordinates then what happens instead of simply writing add b you are saying f dot add b now what is f f is your frame object so you are accessing the frame object and you are asking the button to be added on to that frame object. This is association. Rest is exactly the same. All you have to do is that you have to associate the frame object with all these uh, methods. Okay. So that is the way by which you can associate a frame by uh, frame to your program by association. So again, the example output looks exactly the same. Okay. So when we create a GUI, normally we are supposed to click on it or we are supposed to drag it. Some kind of actions will happen with an AWT or a GUI object. So these particular actions are in turn events or when you click on a, uh, just like when you have a registration button and you click on the registration button, what happens? You will be forced to navigate to another page, right? When it comes to a web example, web application. So just like that, any uh, GUI object is associated with an action. And this action will in turn have a response, which we usually call it as event handling, okay? So now let's see what is event and event handling. So we have to perform some steps for handling such kind of events when we are dealing with AWT. First one is that whatever be the component, whether it be a button or a label or a text field or text area, whatever it is, if there are chances of an event to happen, then you will have to register that component with the corresponding listener. For example, if you have a button and you are clicking on the button, so that is an event, button clicked. In that case, what happens? You are forced to navigate to some other page or you have to uh, display a dialogue that registration is successful. Whatever it is, you have some response to happen whenever the button is clicked. So that happens only if you are registering your button with the corresponding listener, which identifies that the button is clicked. Listener is nothing but an entity which helps you to identify that button was clicked by the end user. Okay, so that is the first part of event handling. You have to register your component with the listener. Okay, so many classes are there. All these classes provide various kinds of registration mechanisms. So some examples I have quoted here. So, if you have a button, normally we associate an action listener with a button. Okay, so this is the syntax, this is the method signature for the action listener. So, what happens? Here, you are adding an action listener with the corresponding event handler. Okay, similarly, you have a menu item example. Okay, you can, uh, I, I hope you have already learned this in your previous example. So that's all about the fundamentals of AWT. On the next class, we'll discuss 
in detail about all the component classes of AWT. Thank you.